Welcome everyone, my name is Fist Truck. So recently I did a video called How to Sword and Shield in Elden Ring. And I think the simplicity of the build in that video resonated with a lot of people, and more importantly I had a lot of fun doing it, so I'm doing the same shit with the katana. But before I get into that, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Myself! As I just launched a second YouTube channel called Fist Truck TV. Pretty much anything I feel like isn't a good fit for this channel goes up on that channel. So right now there is some Let's Play stuff on there, including one of Elden Ring. Link in the description. Check it out now. New video up every day. Now back on topic, going over my approach to these builds, because yes, there are three builds, because if it was just one build, the video would have been like two or three minutes long, and I felt like that would have been a waste. So the builds are focused on using a katana, obviously, or katanas, and keep the extra stuff to a minimum. I'm not using any spells or casting, I'm not using any items aside from one incredibly stupid exception, and probably obvious and goes without saying, but I'm not using any other weapons aside from katanas. Uh, why? Well, simple, like I said, I find the simplicity to be fun, and I think it resonates with a lot of people. More importantly, you really don't need to rely on bleed for these to be good, and I kind of want to show that off. Though bleed is a nice thing that they do, it's not the main thing, aside from an obvious exception. Same for bleed slash frost combos. It's undoubtedly very effective, but once again, it's not necessary and i feel like most of the time here people talk about dual wielding katanas that's the reason why also these are just a handful of dumb builds i came up with like any other weapon you'll get the most out of it when you make it fit with your play style and remember have fun with it and now with that preamble out of the way once again i am fist truck and this is how you katana fuck how to katana and elden ring subscribe build number one the samurai time to hit them with the one two yo because we're about to be the most honorable motherfucker in these lands. In the face of adversity, we will samurai. When getting blasted in the face by fire, we will samurai. When given the opportunity to backstab an enemy, we will also samurai. Step one, buy the Eastern armor, or at least that's what I'm calling it because that's what it was called in Dark Souls 1. This can be purchased off the merchant that's located in the merchant shack in Dragon Barrow. If you show up here at night, prepare to get your dussy licked because one of these guys shows up. Also, if you pick the samurai as your starting class, you have successfully done step one without having to spend Eldens. Step two, get the Uchi Katana. This can be located in Death Touch Catacombs. I picked this up at some point earlier in my playthrough, so I don't have footage of me actually picking it up. Also, you can complete this step if you pick the samurai as your starting class. Step 3. The Uchi Katana comes with an Ash of War called Unsheath. However, I feel that's just a bit too milk toast for us. So we'll be going to these crabs over here in Limgrave and picking up the Ash of War called Unsheath. Really, we're just doing this because we're going to give the Katana the Keen Infusion. That's about it. Step 4. Time to get the Alexander Jar Shard. As I said in my Sword and Shield video, I really hate doing NPC quest lines more than once, so I'm just going to be reusing the footage from that video. R.I.P. Pot Dad. We forgive but we never forget. Step five, we're getting the Dagger Talisman, which can be located in the Volcano Manor. I also did this in my Sword and Shield video, so guess where I'll be using this footage from? Ha <laughs> ha! We're gonna be abusing the ever-living fuck out of Unsheathed, so it just makes sense to have this. Step six, we're getting the Carrion Filigreed Crest. I also did this in my Sword and Shield video. I hope you're understanding why I did three builds in this video, because if it was just this, this would be the laziest video I possibly ever made. It would have been like half the build I did in a previous video, and the other half you could do by just starting the game. Anywho, we're gonna be doing Unsheath a shit ton as I just previously said, and Unsheath uses a good chunk of blue bars, so this helps a lot with that. So to go over stats real quick, we have 50 Vigor, 65 Dex, 20 Endurance, and 25 Mind. Vigor is health, that's it. 65 Dex because we're gonna be giving the Katana the Keen Infusion and that's all our damage. 20 Endurance because your character is really, really delicate with their stamina in this game, so we really don't need a lot, especially considering the shit we're wearing is Mega Light. And then 25 Mind because we're gonna be using a lot of blue bar. So now the way I approach this build is to fight as honorable as humanly possible. Also, just spam the ever-living fuck out of Unsheath, even if it almost kills you. It's it's really really strong, it's really really fast, and it's also pretty cool to look at. Much like the Sword and Shield video, this is obviously not the most meta OP usage of a katana, but it's fun, and it looks cool, and I like it. Also the armor sucks fat cock. So just to go over the talismans real quick once again, we're using the Alexander Jar Shard, the Dagger Talisman, the Carrion Filigreed Crest, and I didn't talk about this one, but I use the Axe Talisman just to do a little bit extra damage with my charge attacks. However, it really doesn't matter whatever you put in the fourth slot, that's up to you. Build number two. In my ongoing pursuit of originality, I come to you with a build inspired by Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. However, instead of being the one-winged angel, we're gonna call him the dipshit devil. It's like Sephiroth, but the one we have at home. Step one, and the worst step of this build, we're gonna be getting the Nakakiba. 
Hopefully you have better luck getting this than I did, because I got bitched around quite a bit. Now you can get the Nakakiba off of our boy Yura. However, by the time I started recording this video, I kind of flew through a playthrough. So by the time I got to him, Yura wasn't Yura anymore, and he was taken over by this dude Shabriwi. So I killed him thinking that he would drop the weapon. But it turns out that he didn't die there. He died over here at this one church in the Altus Plateau. Now, according to the wiki, depending on how far you progress the storyline is where you'll find the sword. Unfortunately, I checked every other location but the Altus Plateau. So I was on this for like 30 minutes like a fucking monkey. Nonetheless, the sword is like the katana, but it's better in every single way. It has the longest range out of all the katanas. It's just as fast and just as strong. Step two, we're getting the Raven's Feathers armor shit. This can be located in the Sage's Cave. This time I came prepared with a light source. If you don't get what I mean by that, check my How To Bloodborne and Elden Ring video. Nonetheless, this armor gives us that one-winged dumbass look. Also, it gives us a fat boost to jumping attacks, which is really the main reason why I'm grabbing it, but RP and shit. Step 3, we're getting the Claw Talisman, which can be found in Stormvale Castle. Guess what this does? Boost jumping attacks. I bet you can see where we're going with this build. Step 4, time for the Ash of War. So this one also involves some trial and error. At first, I tried using that Raptor Mist thing, but it's unreliable as fuck. It looks cool, and it also leads into a jumping attack, because guess what? We'll be doing them. However, half the time you do it, the attacks go over your fucking head! So memes or not, that's just too useless for me. I cannot get behind that. So afterwards, I figured, hey, maybe I'll try Double Slash. Since we're doing all the moves that were ripped straight from Sekiro, I might as well give that one a shot. It's cool. It's awesome. It does good damage. It's slow as fuck. And the more nimble enemies will just back up if you try doing it. So that brings us to the one that I actually wound up using, Sword Dance. And I'm just going to pretend that Sephiroth did a move that looked similar to this in Kingdom Hearts or some shit like that. It's pretty quick. It's a gap closer, and coupled with the range of the sword, most things don't get away from this move. Also, it helps bleed proc, but I'll talk about that later. Step 5. Sephiroth did Meteor, so we're gonna be doing something similar. Throw some fucking rocks. Time to move on to the stats. I use the same stats as the samurai. Moving on, playstyle. Abuse the ever-living fuck out of the range of this weapon. It is easily the best part of it. The Ash of War, as previously stated, can help bleed proc. Also, once again, it's an awesome gap closer. Also, it looks really fucking cool when you pull it off successfully. But really, the main thing is that we're gonna be doing jumping attacks since they hit really, really hard with all the stuff we got on. And also, once again, help build up stagger. So now onto the talismans. First, we'll be starting with the Jar Shard, followed by the Dagger Talisman, followed by the Carrion Filigreed Crest. Now, I know I didn't talk about those right now, but that's because I did five fucking minutes ago. And then we'll be rounding it out with the Claw Talisman. Also, for as stupid as my guy looks, I still think this is closer to the source material than the Final Fantasy VII remake. Build number three. Now, I kind of had a hard time coming up with a name for this build, so I'm just gonna call this one Definitely Balanced. Now, this is probably gonna be one of the most meta builds that I've done in any of my videos, but with that being said, I still managed to fuck it up. Step one, get the Moon Veil Katana, which can be located within the Gale Tunnel that's located inside of New Jersey. At the very end is a magma worm kill him, because apparently the magma worm has a whole ass katana stuffed inside of its gooch. Step 2, we're getting the meteoric ore blade, which can be found within the Kaled Waypoint Ruins, located down the staircase that took me way too long to find. Once downstairs, we're gonna unga bunga our way through the room full of centipede boys that just shoot at you, but also really don't do much, so I just kind of smacked my way through it. At the end, there's a treasure chest, katanas inside of it. Step 3, we're getting the big jar talisman or whatever it's called that super beefs up your equip load. So in order to do that, we gotta go visit the jar god located in front of this gigantic missed opportunity located over in New Jersey. Once there, we appease the jar god by killing these three sacrificial lambs because the jar god requires blood. Step 4, speaking of blood, we'll be getting the Lord of Blood's exaltation, which can be located in the catacombs at the bottom of the Langdale sewers. There's really only a couple things that you have to watch out for at the bottom. They're lobsters, they're scary, then once you go fight the boss, the dogs, they're also scary, and the NPC soft like baby shit. But it killed me. Step 5. We'll be getting the Ryan Wink Sword Insignia, which involves me doing Millicent's questline, which I fucking hate. So first, we'll be stunting on O'Neill, New Jersey, then killing one of the Godskin dudes located by the windmills over in the Altus Plateau. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of me killing him, so here's footage of me fighting one that looks the same. Then afterwards, we're gonna go killing the worm that's located over in the Halic Tree. This thing could go kick some fucking rocks. I hate this fight. Hopefully, along the way, you've been talking to Millicent and all the myriad of locations that she's appeared in. Because after you kill the worm, some summon signs show up, you choose to help her, 
You have to kill four NPCs, except she carries because she slaughters two of them on her own in the blink of an eye, so it's really not that big of a deal. I remember this being harder when the game came out, but I could just be wrong. Nonetheless, once she's dead on the floor because it's an NPC questline in this game, you have to run Wayne Sword Insignia. Step 6, we'll be talking about the stats and the armor because they very much have to do with each other. So starting with the stats, 50 Vigor, 15 Strength, 18 Dex, 60 Intelligence, and 30 Endurance. Strength and Dex are there just to meet the basic requirements of the weapon, and both weapons scale incredibly well off of Int, so that's why we have so much Int. And lastly, 30 Endurance, because that's all that we have left over, however, if you want to trade some Vigor for Endurance, I could understand that. So with all that being said, you're going to want to wear the heaviest armor possible that keeps you under the 70% threshold, so you can keep your medium rolls. Now, I kind of screwed myself in this playthrough, since I never picked up the fat armor in Lane Dell. I killed Rykard too early, so I never got the bullhorn armor, and I just a pee pee poo poo man, so there's that stuff. So the heaviest thing I had was the Tree Sentinel stuff, where you could buy the Veteran's armor after you kill Nihal. With the current stat spread, we have an equip load of number on screen, so that means you can wear up to number on screen worth of shit. Milk it. So the playstyle for this build is dual katanas. This fucks, we already know. It does a lot of damage. Bleed happens pretty often, and by focusing on magic damage, it feels practically unfair how well these do, at least on New Game and New Game Plus. Moonveil is in the right hand since I find the Ash Award to be more useful, but with that being said, I almost never used it. So we'll lastly wrap this up with the talismans. Claw Talisman, I didn't talk about it here because five minutes ago. And as previously stated, the Ryan Winged Sword Insignia, the Big Jar Havel's Ring thing, and the Lord of Blood's Exultation. That about wraps things up. I'm not gonna lie, I took about a month off the game leading up to me doing this video. And I don't know why, but I got an appreciation boner for the game, so I might be doing a video on that kind of soon. Not the boner, but the appreciation part. Nonetheless, if you try any of this stuff out, I hope you have fun with it, or you do your own spin on it, that's also awesome. And once again, don't forget, new channel, Fist Truck TV. Currently, a Let's Play of Elden Ring is up there, at least part of it. Amongst a bunch of other stuff, in the future, I'll go up some, like, tabletop role-playing stuff, and literally anything else that I don't feel would fit properly on this channel if you enjoyed the video like comment subscribe or don't and lastly i've been fist truck and until next time don't forget to always wipe before you shit